Welcome to the Date Forever podcast. Keep your relationship fueled up with strategies discovered by couples and experts. Because at Fuel Collective, we believe better relationships will equal a better world. You are about to discover specific insights and tools that cost little or nothing to implement to help you date forever. And now, here are your hosts, a couple who always have a half-packed suitcase and a date night in the calendar, Sammy and Nathan Yeager. In today's episode, we're talking about giving up on Tinder, how to grow as individuals and as a couple, identifying the signs that you're with the right person, jumping hurdles together, the different shapes of romance, and the power of continuing individual practices and growth. Now let's get into it. Welcome to the Date Forever podcast. Tonight we are welcoming Kelly Bowen and Alex Tripod. Alex is an international speaker and number one bestselling author. She has been obsessed with vibration and manifesting and the law of attraction her entire life. She's worked with thousands of people, helping them next level their income, impact, and freedom. Her partner and special person, love of her life, Kelly, is the CEO CEO of Lifestyle Finance Co., world champion water skier, speaker, and transformational coach. Um, Kelly is passionate about helping people live their most fulfilled life and challenging the status quo. So welcome to the podcast, welcome. ladies. Thanks for having us. I love that little bashful look when we're like, oh, I love of your life. Like, <laughs> it's so, super cute. So thank you so much for joining us. We would love to get to know you a little bit better. How did the two of you meet? Well, if you were... Kelly had a belief that the right person would walk right through her front door. So I'll give it over to her how it happened. Yep. Try yeah. Try to give the inspiration by okay. <laughs> land the plane version. Yeah, to land the so plane version. I'd got to a point where I'd been sort of like dating on and off Tinder and I was like, it's just like, it, it's great if you want to get laid. However, <laughs> you want to find substance. It's not like, it's literally like trying to find a needle in a haystack. It's there. But, like, the, the, the probability of connecting um, isn't as high as it is to get laid. Anyway, so I got to a point. I'm like, I never had the Tinder experience. <laughs> I feel ripped off, man. N- neither. It yeah, was, neither yeah, we were together us. before it was a thing. <laughs> okay. Mind you, I was looking for men at the time. <laughs> yeah. <But anyway laughs> and, like, I'd had an experience, like, a few years ago where I'd actually, I'd been to a, an event, like a personal development event, and I actually met, actually, like a really like-minded person and it was really simple and it was really easy and although it didn't go anywhere but that synergy and that ease of how natural it was I was like you know what I don't need any of this stuff I believe that when I am ready I've, I've done the work I'm vibrationally in the right spot the right person literally just walked through my front door and it really did happen so oh, yeah. <laughs> were you doing an Uber Eats delivery or <laughs> one of the complication was is that at the time I was actually dating one of Kelly's good friends and she wanted to introduce who who was a dating a love coach uh, who identified as straight, but apparently the straight girls love me. (laughs) (laughs) GFA, hashtag gay for Alex was starting a movement. And basically uh, she's like, I really want you to meet my two good friends, Gabby and Kelly. And, and then, went over and then there was nothing that happened that night but it, it like we barely spoke yeah we barely spoke but from that from that moment I think something inside of me kind of realized I really wasn't in that soul awakening extraordinary sort of like soulmate love that I was seeking and everything sort of like hit me like a lightning bolt and then it was a clean breakup and then literally nine days later Kelly and I were together. Yeah. Needless to say, we're not friends with her anymore because that was a pretty hard pill to swallow. Yeah. But yeah. Times of this, when soulmate couple, and I don't want to pre-frame this, but I've heard so many like soulmate twin flame, like you, like things come together, and there's mm-hmm. like someone that always gets the raw stick of the end. Yeah, like, it's really like kind of looking back. It doesn't make any sense why 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 she, she had to get hurt. why she had to go through it, and and for us, like for me, it was such a like a strange experience falling so deeply in love at the same time of having all these other emotions on the side. Like it was really kind of a, um, oh, like a juxtaposed example of just how complex the human emotional system is, how you can feel mm. things at the same time. Mm. And maybe we just have to trust that that was a lesson that that person needed to learn too. 
that was something that they had to move through to be ready. She's in love. <laughs> She's with a man as far as that we know. Good, yeah. But, yeah, so that, that was the – it really tested – I guess it tested like every belief I had about like be a good person, do the right thing, be a good friend. And there was a lot of like all of those social boundaries we could we could have used as an excuse of not to be together. However, yeah. the gravity and the connection between us was just undeniable. Like even if we did play that out, it, would, it wouldn't have lasted longer. And how long ago was that first meeting? October 13th, 2017. Yeah, oh, no, the very first meeting. Well, when we first got together or when we first met? The nine days apart. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. That, that was the breakup. No, we met like a month before that. So it was probably like September we met. September 2017. 17, so yeah. almost three years ago. Yeah. Wow. And you got engaged not too long ago, right? Uh, like 10 months in. So I wanted to put a ring on it because if you like it, right? <laughs> um, and it's funny because it sounds like, well, three years, it doesn't really sound like that long to be together but I tell you what the lesbian urge to merge <laughs> <laughs> the U-Haul thing right like the, it's kind of like I feel like I've been with Kelly for 10 years so I'm, I proposed 10 months in I, I landed Bali I just had this I had no ring I was just like oh my god I'm gonna propose to Kelly and next thing you know, I'm flying her up and she has no idea. I'm just like, I just want to come out. for a holiday. And I, I'm flying my client back home to get a ring from Brisbane to back because there's no rings in Bali. And, like, it was a pretty yeah. extravagant thing. But, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Yeah. So how did you know that she was your person? I knew she was my person from two week, one week in. It wow. was – I. how do you explain it? Um it was, I still remember, so that the first night we spent alone, it was, she was calling me wifey on that night. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Missed you. It, or, yeah, before you our first kiss, I was like, like, come here, wifey. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hold up. I know lesbians are hectic, but like, <laughs> but I, I think there, there was this like knowing, and I still remember the conversation we had, like, what was the question you posed me? We, were, we had a couple of ones and I was like, Correct me if I'm wrong, like, is it just me or is there something going on between us? That's right. And then Kelly was like, yes, but I would only go there if I knew it was something more, like, I wouldn't go I there. I thought she was, was a player. Just a and I was like, <laughs> oh, moment. And I think to just put it, like, really, like, simply, I knew she was my person because we just had this complete transparency and security Mm. Right from the start. Yeah. yeah. There was no of, games. Yeah. None. There was a lot of emotional security from the get-go. Yeah. You're obviously crazy about each other. What does romance look for, like for the two of you? <laughs> and this is something we've been, like, recalibrating to yeah. if we're being really transparent because we're both growth-driven and we've both got very successful businesses. At the start, the first eight months was just like, what <laughs> Romance. We almost drove those <laughs> into a wall because right? it was all romance, all fun. All fun. <laughs> and um, now we're trying to really recalibrate because it might, our truth is when we make the relationship number one priority and we make our love the hub, all the magic flows into finances, into business growth, into health, into everything. Um, but I think there was a belief going on for a while that when we make the full stability, financial success, then we we'll set our freedom. lives up to have the time freedom. And it's like, what a load of bull that that just perpetuates the same crap. So romance for us is, is sometimes simple and sometimes a little bit, you know, it's mostly, spon I'd say we like doing a lot of spontaneous stuff. Yeah, but I think like on a day-to-day on -day basis, like we spend, at least just a minute in bed before we get out of bed, before the day starts, before the phones, before anything, we spend at least a minute just eye gazing together and breathing together and connecting. And then before we touch phones, we sit, we have a coffee together, we meditate together, like whether it be like a relationship meditation or intentional meditation or a TM kind of meditation, we meditate together. And then we create, consciously create our days from there and bring that back into our lives because mm -hmm. it, it wasn't like that for a while. It was a bit chaos. Yeah. But bringing this level of presence back has opened up this space 
where we can, we're slowing down enough to make dinner together, to have candles, like candles and, you know, time for connecting and talking about our future and designing out our lives and taking each other on spontaneous feet when we're allowed out of our bloody but house. I'll tell you, <laughs> <laughs> the sights are most, most, like hands down, is I always joke that it's when spontaneous adventurous, adventurous. And it's just like when we have like like drop of the hat decisions. Do you want to go to Hawaii? Sure, okay. let's go. Twelve days later, we're going to Hawaii. Do you want to go to Fiji? Okay. Do you want to go out to Squires Off for a steak? It's fucking six thirty. All right, cool. Let's go like that. That excites me. Like uh, yeah. yeah, even like we're, we're moving house at the end of this month, but it happened. Like Alex literally found a place. She's like, "Hey, do you like this place?" And I'm like, "Yeah, let, let's apply." Bang. Next day, within twenty three hours, I'm done. Got it. Wow. So, like this, this for us and, and creating these kind of like random spontaneous don't know what's going to happen next moment for each other. This is really exciting for us. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like it's a really beautiful blend between your desire to plan and have, you know, quite, you've got big aspirational goals for yourselves and your businesses and then sprinkled that with spontaneity and, you know, and venture. That sounds like a beautiful blend. Absolutely. Nailed it. So we've heard you talk a little bit about, um, you know, consciously creating your love bubble and you sort of touched a little bit about that in your morning ritual, which sounds ace. Can you talk to us a little bit more about what that conscious love bubble is? Yeah, cool. So I originally first came across this. Um, it was in Stan, uh, Stan Tack, and he talks about the psychobiology of being in love and what creates emotional security within a couple because what breaks down in a relationship first is the emotional security, then comes all the crap, and then eventually you just see your partner as a threat. So even if they haven't done anything, simply their breathing can, like, <laughs> all kinds of crazy shit, right? So one of the things that Crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I think sometimes people have experienced that, even if it's not with a loved one, it's like a housemate who's just, like, their presence just is too much. <laughs> That tone of yours. Yeah, <laughs> that breathing. <laughs> so this is where I first came across it. Now, at the time, like this is when we first met, and I was telling her, I was like, right, so we're going to have this like couple bubble and it's going to be amazing. It's so great when you fall in love with somebody else into growth and personal development because they say yes to everything. Anyway, so not really understanding, I guess, the depth of what that meant at the time. But essentially what it is is understanding your partner on such a deep emotional level that you know what builds them up and you know what knocks them down. And you commit to never doing the things that knock them down, which is a lot harder than it sounds, particularly when they piss you off. (laughs) (laughs) And really commit to learning their owner's manual so that when they're, regardless of how it is that they communicate what's going on for them, you actually read between the lines to see it for what it is so you can be there with love and not met with anger. Now, that is so much so much easier to practice in theory than it is in reality. And this has been the biggest challenge that we have had in terms of like once that like, ah, the love and the excitement and, you know, everything about the, you know, like all the love drugs, when the love drugs start to wear off and you're left with each other, how do you navigate that? Because the more time you spend with somebody and the more that you're with them, the more your unconscious mind's blend. And that has been fun for us. <laughs> and <laughs> it has been, honestly, it's been the most rewarding yeah. journey and fulfilling journey and the most epic thing that I've ever committed to. You want to grow? You want to become your best version? Get in a conscious relationship. It's like... <laughs> And on crack. Yeah. I might just add one thing to that with consciously creating your relationship, and that is I think mm-hmm. we we get we like it's kind of like, oh, we got engaged, oh, we're getting married. And if we're not consciously defining what marriage means to us and creating our mm-hmm. own rules around that, we fall into the paradigm and the rules and the belief systems of what our prior uh, generation. Mm-hmm created around that and so then we fall unconsciously into the oh we only have sex once a month now that's normal and until and until 
consciously creating that. So create your engagement bubble, create and define your uh, what marriage means to you bubble. No different to how I get my clients to define what their true wealth identity is. Otherwise, you're going to be living the wealth identity of your mum and dad. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah it does. Yeah, we um, Nathan and I got married in 2012 and 23 years old and we, I, I guess, had the opportunity to, to do that while we were, like, still really young and it was like, oh, my gosh, why would you want to get married and, like, settle down? And it was like, well, that's not what that means for us. Like, us getting married didn't mean settling down. It meant going on these crazy adventures with, with my person um, and what's really better than that than living uh you know the life that you're designing with you know with conscious choice with that person through it you know so it's like i'm not settling down i'm i'm doing what i can at 23 what you might decide to do by the time you're 35 so if i'm lucky enough to have found my person and mature enough to like be able to commit to that level then do you know what I mean? So I commend you guys for that. It's awesome. Yeah, but I mean, it was interesting how we got met, like that, how that energy got met of like just not understanding. And so, you know, we both travelled independently and and went on trips overseas with you know our our people and our networks and things. And people just couldn't believe like what you're married and you're travelling separately, or what you're married and you're you know you're living in separate states for periods of time. And like it was. Yeah, it was really beautiful for us to be able to define what that marriage meant for us. So it's so nice to hear that you're, you know, you're going on that journey for yourselves too. Sometimes it's when you are so solid in your, um, in your, I guess, self-assurance and your belief systems and you're solid with each other and that security and stability, it can um, trigger others because it, it, it's either they push their beliefs on you which makes them feel better or they have to look at themselves in the mirror which is sometimes much more painful, more painful than trying to put your <laughs> back down to their level of belief systems or consciousness yeah. Yeah. yeah so so we believe that one of the keys to dating forever is not just dating as a couple but dating yourself as well so how how do you stay as individuals when you are in such an epic team that's a good, good question. question. <laughs> um, sometimes this happens organically and then sometimes we have to consciously make that choice of separation because we kind of, like, would you be fair, like, we kind of run in cycles. And what I mean by that is we'll have, like, right now this is downtime for us. There's no, oh, it's there's so, so lush. There's no, <laughs> there's no pressing deadlines. Like, we can get up in the morning, have our connection time, and then we go about our day and we do our do our own things and then we come back together at night and it's like, cool, you've had a day, I've had a day and then we can sort of like yeah. talk about it and we've both got our individual practices and the individual things that like we really love and our individual friends that we've like have since re- like been really making a conscious effort to like sort of nurture all areas of life and not just get overly focused in the business world. But when we're, when we're in this kind of flow, oh, it's, it's a dream. And then we've got other times where we're, like it's a bit, we've just come off the back of eight weeks of events and you're literally like you have to work as a team. There's not to get those pockets of individuality. It's it's not as easy because you're constantly on the go and you're constantly yeah. moving and that's where you kind of learn the synergy of how well you work together. I think for me what keeps my sanity, whether we're hectically crazy busy or whether we're in just chill state, is um, for having my own um, uh, discernment and discipline around my morning routine i know that when i wake up and yes connect with kelly and that's our agreement but also then getting in my gym clothes going to drive down the beach running 5k talking to the universe coming back transcendental meditation like having that hour to myself Mm -hmm. or i speak to a client before i do anything um when i don't do that i'm gonna put my hand up and say I'm not the most pleasant person so that for me anchors in my own individuality and I think it's quite healthy to have that Kelly has her yoga mm-hmm. Kelly has her own practices that she does yeah they're yeah. both very different in terms of what makes us feel good but it's honoring that yeah. that makes us work together so much better because when we don't we're not much fun to be around yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we're a little over each other yeah. and that that stuff can take trial and error right and not start adopting the other person's at the beginning, you know behaviors 
absolutely at the beginning we blended it like we tried to do each other's everything because you do when you fall that deeply in love like you want to be everywhere Slash with i stopped meditating because you know or did my stuff that made me feel good because oh it's okay i'm in a relationship now and then i almost like unconsciously resented kelly because i do better when i'm sick <laughs> i do better my whole business is collapsing why have i turned into a shit person <laughs> doing your stuff that makes you feel good it's got nothing to do with kelly it's got to do with the lack of boundaries and the lack of communication of what what your needs are Mm -hmm. and as soon as we openly communicated what we needed then like but the the initial meshing people pleasing to to make each other like just the rose colored glasses and oh you could do anything so any couples that are moving in freshly you know be aware that this is really just about having that uh, healthy communication of your needs and doing it from a heart space. Um, yeah, and and putting up those boundaries, being an act of kindness. Like, I, you know, I'm going to step away and you can do your thing and I'm going to do my thing and it's actually better for both of us if we have a line. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, in those, like, deep, like it, doesn't feel, like, it doesn't feel like you need it at the time, but if you can set those practices up from the beginning, mm-hmm. oh, it'll serve you so much more in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. So when, when challenges do come up, like how can couples use that as an opportunity for growth and, and to grow as a couple? Do you want to handle this? Yeah. One? Sorry. This, <laughs> this is like my favorite thing. And again, like, you know, sometimes that the, like this is, I don't think you learn how well you relate until you actually relate with someone. And before I met Alex, I'd been doing a heap of work. I mentioned Stan Tactic earlier. This is some more stuff that, that he talks about with, um, Hair bonding, and I was like, Yeah, I know all the conceptual stuff, and, I'll tell you things. and then we got to practice them. So, what I believe in terms of any time you decide to live with somebody, you're going to be intimate with someone, you your nervous systems blend together. Like, there's actual um, there's studies that show your nervous system blends together. There's you, there's your partner, and there's who you are as a couple, and how your nervous systems enmesh. Now, what's going to happen when that happens, all your inadequacies of childhood are going to come to the surface. So abandonment, wounding, um, anger. People pleasing. Yeah, all of this stuff, right? So when your stuff bumps with your people's stuff, your per- people's, persons, one person, person stuff, <laughs> uh, the rule is that you be there. You show up, you give them whatever they need in that moment to help calm their nervous system because their nervous system is intrinsically linked with yours to calm their nervous system. And then once the threat is gone, it's that person who got triggered. It's their responsibility to take that and go do the individual work on it so the same shit doesn't keep coming back to the mm. relationship. And it's kind then- of the idea that, yeah, you don't heal what you don't work on, right? Right, right, right. So this has been our biggest piece of work. It has had us catapult individually as people. It has had us catapult in business and like our growth and evolution through this and that commitment that like you're, you're, I am so committed to you and to being with you and that to working with you through this because I see you and I love you. Like that is the greatest gift you can give a partner. And, and our only our number one rule is as long as your person is working on themselves, you don't give up on them. Yeah. If they're not working on themselves, they're different like, story. oh, it's not my problem. Different, different story. You're allowed to call it quits. But if they if you can see them committed and they're working on themselves, then yeah. hang in there. They're worth the fight. Yeah. Your, if your values are aligned, your visions are aligned, what's important to you is aligned, and you're just like dealing with this like initial initial mood. like self worth, self love like enoughness like as that stuff's healing as you're becoming two individuals that are like whole together then you stay with them so there's a fairy tale belief that when you find the one it'll be magical and perfect and all smooth sailing (laughs) so can you tell us a bit about how the two two of you navigate hurdles when they come up yeah well it was magical and all the fairy (laughs) tale I think it's just this idea, right, that like if you found your person, that it should just be easy and problem free and, you know, smooth sailing. So I think people experience those um, hurdles and they're like, then this can't be my person or that like there must be someone better out there for me because, you know, if it was my person, then this stuff wouldn't be happening, which I don't believe is true. Obviously, I think we do need to work on 
things, but how, how do you guys navigate that, those sorts of things? I think my number one rule is, um, I don't know if this will come out properly, but let me give just it give crack. it a crack. <laughs> when I get triggered, um, it's, yeah, I could leave Kelly and I could run and I could meet another individual that looks different, that I call in another person that's got the same stuff because I've still got the same stuff to heal. So she's mm. our next person's still going to mirror reflect the stuff that I need to heal. Or I could finally, finally choose to deal with it once and for all in the here and now. Or I could keep running and manifest the same thing and deal with it now. Or I could do it now. Or I could do it, I, now. do it now. Or I could run. Or I could do it now. And that, like, that knowing of like, oh, my God, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's always me, it's always me. Ah, as painful as that sounds, like Kelly it's is a reflection. It's free and bitter all at the same like, time. Uh, Kelly is a reflection of what I truly believe I'm worthy of. And, like, I even go as deep as, because obviously I'm into manifestation and quantum physics, I'll even go as deep as, like, every word she speaks, everything she says, I'm creating her. She is a, literally a creation of my imagination. She is a projection of my subconscious beliefs. So if I'm getting triggered by her, if I'm hating her, like there's something to be healed in me. Yeah. <laughs> it's deep, right? The idea that you're holding up the mirror for yourself in, in your partner. Yeah. yeah. Full on. Good stuff though. Like good to acknowledge and think about and mull over and go, yeah, I could abort mission but I'm going to, it's just going to be a different mission, you know, Say, same, same route, different mission. But it's aesthetically going to look different. Different. But yeah. After the initial eight to ten months, it's going to come out again. <laughs> uh, so um, we saw a beautiful video that the two of you shot um, around the 16 key signs that you're with the right person. Um, and there's some really beautiful things in there, like, um, you know, that you just sleep beautifully next to that person because you you know you're truly content in your most vulnerable state you know and and things like um that that person will play multiple roles for you they'll be your friend and your lover and your your teacher and you might not always like all of the roles that they play but they you know they show up um so what was the biggest what was the biggest key sign for the two of you that this was your person should have watched that video you sent me. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess you you both kind of said like you just knew, but there must have been something that was just like, I can't dispute this. It was like a feeling of coming home. And I know yeah. how corny that sounds, but it was like she was everything that I've ever been looking for. Plus there wasn't that um, movie like, if, if it's love, it's got to be anxiety and mm. all the games. So it was everything. I, she was everything I wanted. And on top of that, there was a feeling of instant home and security. And I was like, wow. And so that for me was, was I think, the knowing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for me it was like there was definitely that. Like that would have to be hands down. The thing, like, I just, I just knew. I've never been so certain about anything before, and it was so instant. It was this instant certainty, and then I guess seeing it play out, the synergy of how we work together, like we literally cover each other's blind spots so organically. And even like if we ever have you over for dinner, we, we cook. Like if you watch us cook, like the Crazy. way that we, it's just, and even how we do do business, and this, it's just this like. Crazy. I have no idea how, what she's brilliant at. She has no idea what clueless. I'm brilliant at, and so it's like clueless. this beautiful. <laughs> and there's about. no like trying to step in each other's lane, or it's like cool. That's your jam. That's your, and that's how it, like it's just. I've never had anything be like so certain and then in the execution of it be so eloquent mm. that's so beautiful really beautiful um w- th- this has been awesome it's been so nice to you know sort of take a little bit of a peek behind the curtains at your your relationship and you're clearly crazy about each other and continuing to build on what you've already got which is so so lovely to see what is your maybe one from each of me what is your number one tip for couples who are in that sort of first year of their relationship and then they're moving through some of these things? My, I think I'm going to have to stick with mine that I said before. You can either run away or you can deal with it now 
or you could run away and manifest it in an aesthetically different thing or you can deal mm. with the now. And that has been my biggest piece of like bringing me back into, um, yeah, the nowness of like, okay, like I really want to make this work instead of running away from myself really. <laughs> I love that. Um, mine's going to be a little bit more practical. So have the conversations early about your vision, what your values are and what's most important to you, what kind of life it is that you want to live and the sorts of things that you want to experience. You know, get into the nitty-gritties about sexually what's okay, what's not okay, like what your sex life wants to be because if that's not a match from the beginning, that's going to be challenging as you move forward. And also get really clear on what your hard nose are and your partner's hard nose. And if that map is like, if it's all green lights, no matter what comes up, when things get like deeper and you get more challenged as life will naturally challenge you, it will show you who your person's going to show up as if all those things are the same. And that's something like in our first few dates, it was usually like, right, what do you want? What's your vision? What do you want to experience? What are you sex? Like, Louis literally went there like so early on. And I don't know if it's a hectic lesbian thing, but because I, those, know. <laughs> I know you hate trick couples and are that. way more hectic. Yeah. But the, if those fundamental things are there, you can work everything else out. Mm. If those fundamental things aren't there, no matter how much you love the person, you're going to find it challenging. Mm. Oh, that's really great advice. So, so people have loved what they've heard from you tonight. What's the best way to connect with you? We um, got. We haven't lots really of, thought that. Well, no. We, <laughs> <laughs> like, do you love the gram? Are you Facebook people? Are you LinkedIn people? Are you? We've got Instagram. So I'm at Alex Tripod. Um, if you're into all the manifestation and that kind of stuff, um, together we've uh, got a um, Facebook, Facebook page. page called Living Exceptionally. Yeah, and we've um, got a few Facebook. We've got a, like the 16 Signs video on there, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Co creation of videos yeah. um so we're just constantly adding value into that page yeah or if you want to like, individually it's always easier through my facebook my instagram is boring don't look at me there <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much for spending some time with us um as a way of saying thank you um you know that we believe that um we need to be the change and kind of for us that means being the change in our own lives and taking accountability for what we do but also the contribution that we can make in the world and being the change that we want to see in in the greater world so as a thank you for being here we're going to give 10 days of access to schoolgirls in cambodia which helps them progress to the next grade holds them in school longer and ultimately makes a better world so thank you so much for making that possible Thank you. Thank you. Woo! Thank you so Beautiful. much for having us. This has been really fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we need a round two for sure. There's more questions I've got for you both. So, but thank you. We, yeah, we really appreciate it and um, look forward to sharing, you know, your wedding and, you know, <laughs> how your business evolves and where, you, where you're at in the next stage of your relationship. Really cool. Thank you for sharing it with us. My big fat Greek lesbian wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Movie title. It would be epic. Sign the rights away. Why they do it. Yeah. <laughs> she wants to smash plates, but Which I'm like, no. Thing. She's like, I don't even know why they smash no. plates. <laughs> <laughs> you can create it however you want, right? That's the yeah. idea. Marriage can be, wedding can be, whatever you want. Absolutely. I love it. You don't have to do it anyway. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks heaps for joining us. If you love what we're doing here and want more, subscribe to the Date Forever podcast to make sure you never miss an app. Come and hang out with us and other awesome couples who are fueling up their relationships in the Thriving Couples Collective Facebook group or check us out at fuelcollective.com.au. Until next time, keep on dating because better relationships equal a better world.